Hello, hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Tiffany Talks. I am so excited to dive into this week's topic, you guys. But you know, I got my girl, my sister, Cedra Stokes in the house, and we are going to cover the pros and cons of online dating. So I know you guys are getting ready to hop on for all the juicy stuff. So if you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor, hit like, okay? Because listen, you guys, the like to you is like, you get, you know, you get to know when I got some new material. To me, it's a chance to grow and to spread the, our community and to spread the love. So I am trying to get towards 1 million subscribers and I cannot do it without you, you guys. So I need you guys to hit that like button. If you want to be notified when we go live so you won't miss exciting topics like this on Tiffany Talks every Tuesday at 12.30 p.m., central time, then hit notify. Hit the notify button, like and notify. So I want you to subscribe, like, notify, be in the club, all right? So today we are gonna talk about some hot topics, okay, online dating. So last week, you guys know, I surprised my sister for her birthday and I flew to LA and it was awesome. And you guys got to see the video. If you checked out the Instagram, <laughs> And, you know, of uh, her whole birthday festivities, it was amazing. And she said, all I want for my birthday is a new car, which she got, right? She wanted a new hairstyle, which she's already fly. And she said she wanted to get set up for match or for it to get start to start dating, right? So we didn't get to that. Guess what, you guys? Guess what? Here's the thing. When you put yourself in the energy of the circle of of people that are around you that are doing things that are moving forward even if they don't do it with you it inspires you to do it yourself so i dropped the ball she's gonna she's gonna get on me right now she's like you didn't do it <laughs> right but she did it herself and we are gonna go back and backtrack and see what prompted her to finally finally get online what happened what are your goals and how do we find out the pros and cons of online dating take it away see <laughs> first of all um thank you so much and also hi everybody in the chat hi cheryl hi ann hi sylvia thanks for coming i okay you dropped the ball it's true <laughs> And, and if I'm being honest, it wasn't your ball to drop. It was my ball. So because I put it mm. out there, because I put it out there and we were talking about it. So that's how you participated in it happening. We talked about it. I said it out loud. Yeah. And once you say something out loud, it gives it life. Mm. So even though you were rushing to the airport and you left and I was like, wait a minute, I thought we were going to do this last thing for my birthday. I was motivated to go ahead and do it. By myself. Okay. Which is big. I want to talk about, I want to talk about how long, like, what is it that finally prompted you? Because a lot of people are thinking about online dating, right? And they're thinking about it and thinking about it. How honest do you want me to be? How honest do you want me to be? Really? How honest? Brutally honest. Because there's a lot. Okay. Hey, See, okay. Man. You know, I was thinking about this before we went live. I was like, how honest do you want to be today, Cedra? How much of your business do you want in the streets today? Okay. <laughs> I was thinking about this and I was thinking the reason why... I, I I had a thought and I was like, what are you wait what are you waiting for? It was almost like there was this moment that I was gonna arrive at being a certain version of myself. And I'm like, that version gets to date. Mm -hmm. And all the other versions of me don't get to date. Ooh. Only this idea version of me gets to date. Oh my God, that's amazing. See, that's what happens when you're being authentic. You know, she's such a leader. Leaders are authentic, you guys. So what she said, I have to like go back and chime in. She was like, a lot of times people wait. It's not just for dating. It's for everything. It's for living. It's for traveling. It's like the version of yourself that you think is perfect is the one that gets to do those things. And all the other aspects of yourself that you may be working on or that you may still be challenged by they don't that person doesn't get to do anything is that is that what i'm hearing you say so you had that's exactly what you say so the version of me that had a little bit of extra weight the version of me who didn't have her new hairstyle the version of me who you know wasn't certain if she wanted to you know be seen or share whatever the version of me who wasn't certain didn't want to date Right. right. However, the the version of me in my mind's eye version of me, the one that was that had arrived at destination, everything's great. She wanted a man. <laughs> she wants to date. Right. And so I'm the only person that was stopping her. Yeah. So I was cock blocking. I'm cock blocking myself. The no. version of me that wasn't How ready. That story. 
I'm sorry. How long were you in that story that you weren't ready? Before? I've been in that story. I've been in that story for 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 several decades. Okay. <laughs> Okay, but that's honest, that's real, you guys. It's real talk. So some people, they talk about, and you actually nailed it. They talk about what they want to do. They talk about dating. They talk about their career. They talk about love. They talk about everything, right? But they are waiting for a version of themselves to actually do it. You nailed it, right? So that's so beautiful. So all of and it's an, it shows up everywhere. Everywhere, right? Because, because if you're a certain way, if you're a certain way, you can't separate yourself from that way. So we're so if you're be if I'm being the kind of person that's stalling and not moving forward, I, that's going to show up in a lot of other places in my life. Mm -hmm. And so it shows up. So it showed up in dating. It shows up other places, and it also showed up here. I'm like, oh well, when I mm -hmm. when I lose like a couple pounds, i you know I feel comfortable with dating because you know I have to go on the first date, I have to wear the I, my outfit. It's a little snug, right? Story after story after story, and everyone's stories are different, and they all they all end in the same space. They all they all they all they all land in the same idea, and that idea is um, I'm not good enough. Yes, right now. So it's a boomerang, you guys. It's a boomerang effect. A lot of times we think, oh, well, there's no good men out there, right? What are you really saying? What are you really saying? I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough to. I'm not it. good enough for whatever man that I encounter. Right. Whatever. There's no good jobs out there. You're saying, I don't feel qualified, right? Right. There's no, um, what else do people say? Um, uh, there's not enough money to do this, right? I'm not worth it, right? So there's all these things, everything that we say that doesn't exist. It's expensive. The word expensive, when you say that, that thought, I thought about that when you said that. Yeah. When when, when somebody says something's expensive, yeah. what they're saying is that they're not worthy of that expense. Yes. Yes. Because if a price, if something is a price, that means that someone in the world is paying the price for it. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between the person paying the price for something and the person that's not? Other than abundance, mm -hmm. right? It's it's an it's a it's the energy of worthiness and and that's and that is anchored in abundance. Okay, right. so if you don't feel worthy, your abundance is only going to meet you. It's going to meet you at your self worth. Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh my yes. God! Your abundance is going to meet you at your level of self worth. Yeah. And it will not. It will not. It won't exceed your self worth. <gasps> ah! Uh -huh. That's that's kind of like shocking and jarring yes. here. Yes, you guys. Are you guys hearing what she's saying? That sort of that that morsel of information that can bloom into a full bone blown meal. That morsel can bloom into a full bone meal that you can actually sink your teeth into. Your abundance matches your self worth, and that's abundance of love, abundance of money, abundance of time, all these different things. So we're gonna pull it back to dating right now. So with dating, you finally clicked and said, you know what, like. The, the ones that are not ready to date are still worthy of love. That's what I'm hearing you say. The parts of yourself that we're holding back, they still want love, right? Because ultimately, <laughs> what, we're, what we're doing is we want to show our best self, but our whole self gets to have love. Is that what I was hearing you say? My entire self wants to be in relationship with another human, a man. Mm -hmm. And the parts of me, parts of me, right, that are not, that don't until now anyway until now awareness supports growth awareness supports breakthrough this is an awareness I'm, I'm having right now before i had the awareness that i was operating from a state of i wasn't perfect enough right i shared that the last time now i was and this awareness was even more profound or, or pro, in a different way profound right so what i what i created okay let's just go fast forward to what i created what i created was a uh, breakthrough and the breakthrough that i had was i decided to I just chose to just, I was sitting in front of my computer. It was the darndest thing, ladies. <laughs> hi, Kate. Hi, Ann, Ann Richards. Everybody that's just joining us, hi. When I was sitting in front of my computer and I was like, all I have to do is I could just click on match.com right now. This is what I told myself. It was, the, it was the darndest thing, right? Because I'm like waiting and I didn't know why I was waiting to click on match. So I'm sitting in front of my computer. I was editing photos for one of my clients. And then I clicked, I'm like, let me just click on it now and just see. I clicked on match.com and I was like, oh, 
it's up here now. So it just says get started or whatever the, the prompting was. And I just put in my name or whatever. The next thing I knew I had a profile and the only thing left was to add a couple of pictures. Right. Right. So this so added a couple of pictures. You took Wait, the first I thing. added a couple of pictures. Uh huh. Next thing I know, after I had a couple of pictures, I had a message in my inbox, like within, within moments. Wow. And I was like, Oh my God. And I, and I clicked on the person and he was, he was nice. Yeah. It was a nice guy. He was a nice guy. He was the first guy. He was a nice guy. And he had just been on there for a week. And then later that day, he's like, do you want to talk on the phone? And I was like, it was Tiffany. I swear. I was like, oh my God, I talk to you. Like talk. I called him. Right. Cause I wasn't really sure if I wanted to get my number. So I called him on the phone. And this was me, you guys. It was, I was like, hello, like, like literally not even myself. The voice was not my, my voice. The voice was the voice of a little girl mm. who is, who was being brave. Wow. That's wow. so powerful. Then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> we spoke on the phone for hours, hours. And I'm smiling because it's so funny that I didn't know this person Prior to that moment in time when I went on, I didn't know him in the world. He lives like a Marita Del Rey. I live, you know, Mid Wilshire right now. He's so close to me. I can meet him, you know, in a moment. And he's super kind. So I, that's all I have to say. That's my, that's all I have to say. That's all I know right now. Okay. So, and so, it, just, you know? so it, took, it took just pushing a button, you guys. So let's just go over the steps because we're talking about the pros and cons of online dating. So, the cons are like, there's the unknown, right? You don't know who you're going to meet, who's going to be out there, what's going to happen, right? But what do you truly know in life about what's going to happen tomorrow, right? So the unknown really is nothing. not a solid excuse. I don't know who I'm going to meet. I don't know what's out there, blah, blah, blah. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? So after you overcome that con, right, you go to the pro, a possibility, right? You can meet somebody who's right down the street or like 15 minutes from you that you can have a beautiful conversation with, right? Sounds good. I'm going to stop you right there. That sounds great. But well, Tiffany, this is the point. This is the part. I know the women out there. I know. I know. And what I know is that moment there is a moment that you that that every person overcomes to push the button. You said push the button. There's a moment, and I promise you, I was in that moment twice. Mm. I was in that moment when I went online. I was like, Sh should I? And I I don't know what what I don't know what pushed me forward. But people are waiting to be pushed forward. People are waiting to be I, nudged I, forward. What happened in the moment? What was I? I nudged. I pushed myself forward. I I just I pushed myself. Okay, so that's what's missing in the world. We get to push ourselves forward. Everything you're saying, I'm hearing you say it. I've been hearing you say it forever. You you started dating before me. Remember, you were still saying this stuff. It didn't push me forward. Something pushed me forward. I know what it is. I verbalized yes, it, I ladies. Verbalize it. Tell yourself you want a man. Tell yourself you, you desire partnership. Say it out loud. I think that's what pushed me forward because I had already said it. And, and I kept looping around in my brain to that thought. I'm like, wait, you guys didn't go and match yet. And it kept coming back. Well, last, and I, and it's last week you did something. You made a declaration. You said, I yes. want to go on match for my birthday. So you guys, so there's, th there's things. You make a declaration and you set a buy when date, right? She says, I want to go by my birthday, right? And so she set a time that she wanted to do that. She put it out there into the world, right? And it was like not one day in the near future. She said birthday, right? So it happened within that birthday week. She was still an infant during that time. It happened within that birthday week. So she pushed herself forward by making a declaration and then setting a date. Right. So these are success habits, success patterns. So she made a declaration. So that's what I'm here and push you forward. You set it up. And the third thing was, okay, I made a declaration. I had a buy win date. The third thing was, it just came to me. Thank you, Divine. The third thing was, I wanted to be my word mm, to yeah. the audience. I wanted to be my word to the Tiffany Talk audience because we said it already. Yeah. I was like, in every moment, I was like, I'm not being my word because you were already at the airport. You were gone. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, my God, am I? is this not going to happen? Am I Am I not going to be my word? Yes, right. And I'm like, I'm going to be my word if, it, if I look, if I have to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> she likes to make me responsible for everything, right? 
But you know what? I, I would have done it with her, but like not, it was urgent for her. And that's what life requires urgency, right? And when you are, and when you're in your word, when you're integrity with yourself, right? You say something, you become the person that makes it true. So she said it. She was like, Tiffany's gone, right? I had a whirlwind two days. I had to get on the flight. I had to leave when it was. And I'm still, I still get to commit to myself, right? I still get to put yeah. Right. So then, so you, you push the button. Then what happened? Then mm -hmm. I overcame the idea that I'm not perfect. I overcame. I'm like, Cedra, this is how you look. You look like this girl. Go online. Somebody's going to like the way you look because I see women all the time. And I'm like, she has a man. She has a man. She has. Everybody has a man. However, they look in the world, there is somebody for you out there. And I'm like, and it's like, <laughs> you listen, you guys, I know how I look. Okay. I know how I look. I know how I look and I still have these feelings about how I look. Right. Beyonce has feelings about how she looks. Right. JLo has feelings about how she looks. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the way I look. Right. I'm saying that whatever your idea of who you are is, and if there's something that doesn't match in your mind, it's going to prevent you from, from moving forward. That's what I'm saying. And so there was something about my body or whatever I was looking. I wasn't like my, I haven't been working out, if I'm well, being honest. But yeah, where is, okay, let's explore this. Where did the belief come from that you have to look a certain way to find a mate? Because you say you were looking at people saying they're not perfect and they found they're not perfect. I'm arrogant. I'm arrogant. It okay. comes from arrogance. The okay. idea that, the idea that, the idea that, that, listen, the idea that I, that on a swivel, I look good from every angle. That's my arrogance. I like to be able to swivel myself and look good from every angle. I want to like look good from every angle. And that's the thing that was, it's just, it's just in my, it's just a thing in your brain because whatever my idea of, of looking good is, is not somebody else's idea. Okay. Well, it's, it's so from that in huh? me. Huh? I can't hear you. Where did it come from that you needed to be perfect or look good from every angle in order to find love? Society. It came from society. I'm just going to say it came from society. Okay. I'm going to say the idea out there came from society. The idea out there came from society. So everybody that you know that has love is perfect? For them. I mean, like, for them. That, and that's what I'm saying. That's the whole point. I see people out there in the world. The idea of perfection is not definable to anyone. I can't define perfection for anyone. It's not definable outside of me. It's not definable outside of me. So that's what I'm saying. My it's 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 between my ideal perfection is between this is between here. It's right here. Uh -huh. It's not out there. It's right here. So it doesn't matter. If, it doesn't even make sense. Uh -huh. It doesn't have to make sense. It the idea of perfection is the idea of, of preventing yourself from being in the world, uh -huh. period. Because uh -huh. perfectionism doesn't exist. So the only place it does exist is right here. This is it in your brain. It only exists between these two spaces. So it's not measurable outside of here. It's just not. And, and, um, and then when you realize that it doesn't exist in general, period, it doesn't exist, that frees that free, that's freeing. And then you can mobilize. I'm like, Cedra, this is how you are. Like you, this is how you are. There's no way for you to get away from this. This, this is who you are. This is how you are. You are, you're always like this. I'm like this all the time. Uh -huh. This is who I am. I can't separate myself from me. However, the idea of perfectionism is separating me from my, from my possibilities. Uh -huh. Cause I'm stuck in the idea that that until now, of course, I'm not stuck here any longer. I was stuck in the idea that that unless I unless I unless I move past, move towards perfectionism, I'm not good enough. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right? Unless I'm perfect, I'm not good enough. And and when, and since I know that perfect doesn't exist, I simply get to be good enough now. Yeah. I just get to be good enough. 
So that's so great. So we were talking, and, and it's, I mean, we, there was a whole funny aspect on why we decided to get this show, but now it's we're getting deep on here. But so you guys, listen up, listen to what she's saying, and listen to what what the truth is. There is no perfection in the world, right? And it, life is beautifully imperfect, right? And it's how we navigate the world through a lens of grace and gratitude and beauty, beauty and positivity that makes the world a perfectly imperfect place to be, right? So when you are strong striving for something, right? There's something like analysis paralysis, right? If you're thinking there's no good guys out there, online is not going to work. I'm not going to meet the right guy, blah, blah, blah. It paralyzes you if you're looking for a perfect scenario, right? So I want you guys, if you're thinking about something, exposing yourself to love or a new experience, just assume that it's not, you don't know what it's going to be like right? You don't know what it's going to be like. So detach from it being perfect, right? And push the button. And when you push the button- It's not going to be perfect not anyway. Perfect. It's not going to be perfect, but it's an experience, you guys. Life is a series of one experiences after the other. And if you limit your experience, you limit your life, right? So you push- I have friends. Have experience. I have friends who've been in relationship, in relationship, in imperfect relationships. They've been moving forward in their life, having children- mm -hmm being in love, traveling, doing great things in the world and in perfect situations. They've, they've gone on to divorce the imperfect situations, gone on to other relationships. I have people that I know that keep, that move forward in imperfectness and create a beautiful life. Right. They're moving forward in imperfectness and creating a beautiful life. And if I, and I, if I'm judging or I'm, if I'm measuring or if I'm comparing, which I don't, and I get to right now, right for a second, if I compare my ways of being to their ways of being, I've been stuck until now. If you can relate to this, if you can relate to this, raise your hand. Uh -huh. uh, you've been waiting for a perfect mate while your other friends have gone on and gotten married, ha having kids, divorced, new relationship. And, and you're still stuck in the idea that he's out there, the perfect guy. And that's a vibration. Oh, my God. This is so powerful. So when you guys are... Oh. This is so powerful. If you're looking for the perfect guy, right? You're looking for the perfect guy. You get to match vibration. And as long as you're waiting for yourself to be perfect to meet the perfect guy, right? So if you're waiting for yourself to be perfect so that you can meet the perfect guy and perfection doesn't exist, you end up alone. <laughs> Hello? Hello? So if you're waiting for yourself to be perfect so that you can meet the perfect guy, but perfect doesn't exist, it's not going to exist in you and it's not going to exist in him. And guess what's going to happen, right? You're alone, right? So you get to be perfectly imperfect, right? And well, this is what's so funny about it, though. Wait, this is what's so funny about it. <laughs> this, is a, this is a hoot. So when I'm online and you're meeting people and they're like, have you ever been married? No. Do you have any kids? No. Have you been engaged? No. What's wrong with you? Right. And it's so funny because when I'm looking at the guys and I see them, they've never been married. They don't have any kids. They've never been engaged. I'm like, hmm, I know exactly what's up with you. You've been looking for the perfect mate. Yes. Yes. Well, it's so funny that I can see myself out there in the dating world because if a, if a person has the same kind of waiting pattern that I have in my background, I know that they've been waiting for the perfect mate. So, I know, so I know something about them. This is super powerful. Hold that thought. So Cheryl was asking, what's the difference between uh, settling and an acceptance of perfection, of imperfection? So here's here's it, you guys. The work is within you, right? And you will attract yourself. Hello, you will attract yourself. So what she just said right now was that she was dating and she would see guys that would say that they would say they haven't been married and they didn't have any children. They hadn't been engaged. So she's thinking her and her her previously judgmental, perfect driven mind would go, what's wrong with you? Right. But then she would go, well, wait a minute. I haven't been married. I haven't had kids and I haven't been engaged yet. Right. So then when you do the work on yourself, you will attract someone that matches your vibration. You will attract someone that matches on your vibration. So if you're settling in your life, right, you're going to attract a relationship that you're settling for. Right. If you're looking for perfection in your life, you're going to you're not going to find anything because you're going to be waiting until that perfect person comes. Right. So when you're in the space of working on yourself, you're constantly evolving. Right. And that's not settling. Right. There is no imperfection. So Cheryl said, if you're accepting imperfection, there is no imperfection. So that's I mean, there is no perfection. Right. So the imperfection is life. There is no yes, perfection.
the imperfection of life and life is constantly moving and you're constantly evolving as a human. You're constantly growing. You're constantly getting to- And let's talk about the idea of settling though. What is settling? Because there is a settle, there is a settlement in relationship. There is a place where you've decided where one chooses to be settled, okay? However, how are you defining the word settled? Are you defining settled, Cheryl, that you're giving something up that you desire? Because that's not what this is about. It's about having all of your desires met. So you get to make your list. You get to make your list to find out if you're settling, right? If your list has 10 desirable traits for your partner and he only has one, ask yourself, have you settled? Because no one can answer that for you. Well, it actually goes to right? the second step. Like, are you those things that you're looking for on your list? Right? So are you those, are you being those things you're looking for on the list? So if you're not, you're settling. You're settling in yourself. Right. So if you want somebody who's like successful and they work out and they um, they travel the world and you don't have a passport and you're in your bed and you're like, you know, don't have you're broke down. Then why are you looking for someone that's not going to match your vibration? Right. Oh, wait, so you, and every guy. Yep. Every guy I've ever dated has I, worked out. You get to be the person on your list. Right. And then vibrationally, you will attract that mate. Right. And if, Excellent. and if you are attracted to me that has traits that you consider yourself settling for, look at yourself. Why did you choose it? Right. If you're and that's part of it too, because yeah. I stopped working out until now. And I'm like, I will not date a man that does not work out. I will not. Mm -hmm. That is, that is one of that. That is a deal breaker. You must work out if you're, you must work out. Right. And it's not because I'm some great workout person. It's because I want to make sure that I'm partnered with someone that cares about it. Because birds of a feather flock so that's together. Way to be with a guy that works out is to start doing what? Working out. Working out. <laughs> right? You start being that yourself. Right? That's you start correct. being that yourself. Right? So that's how you can attract that. Okay. So uh, we have one more question. Uh, what about men that fear strong women? Right? Um, are you a strong woman if you're with a weak man? Hello. Hello. <laughs> are you a strong woman if you're with a weak man? So like women are, are constantly adjusting ourselves, not being in our strength, saying, oh, is he weak? You know, because if he's afraid, if he's afraid of being with you, then he's weak. Right. So we get to we get to look for people who are reflective of how we see ourselves. Right. Reflective of how we see ourselves. And that's a conversation that gets to evolve um, on the roles of men. That's a whole nother conversation, the roles of men. And yes, it is. It, it is. And it's an amazing topic. So it was it Cheryl who asked the question. That was Ty. That's an, um, Ty. That's an amazing question. I honestly believe there are no weak men. Mm -hmm. OK, I believe there's only a weak mindset. Mindset. Right? That's right. Weak mindset. Period. The men are, you know, every man out there, every man out there has an opportunity to be, you know, your man, mm -hmm. right? If his mindset matches the mindset that attracts you. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm hearing weakness, I'm hearing weak mindset. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so clarification, because that's exactly what I meant. Like when I say weak, not in body. Not in energy, but in mindset. You know that because I teach the mindset makeover, you guys. The mindset makeover, it's a powerful course that everybody gets to do to elevate your mindset that you can be in the vibration to attract what you want. You guys, we got to wrap up right now, okay? So I'm going to be in another show. But this has been a great conversation. I want to recap some things. We, You know, when CJ and I started talking, we just go and go and go, right? But what, I want to recap some things. Um, about the pros and cons of online dating. So I'm actually going to have Cedric. What are the pros of online dating, Cedric? Because that was a topic. The pros? Yes. Okay, the pros are moving forward, breaking a habit of being sedentary and stuck. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest pro. The biggest pro is moving towards the unknown. Like you don't have to know what's going to happen. Move forward. That's a pro. You move forward in, some, in an area you resist, you're going to move forward in other areas in your life you resist. Oh. So, it, so it's a habit. It's, it's a habit. Moving forward is a habit. So you move forward and don't worry about what's going to happen. You don't have to communicate with anyone you don't want to. Yeah. Move forward. Yeah. Yeah. And what are the cons, if there are any cons? Um, the cons are, are checking out of the game of life. Mm -hmm. The con is not to be in the game. Mm-hmm. 
The con is not to be in the game because no one in the game is ever going to win. If you're not in the game, there's no way you can win. Only players win. Uh -huh. Spectators be don't win. Uh -huh. Spectators don't win. They're in the stands. Uh -huh. Players win. Okay, so if you're going to be in the game, you're going to win no matter what, mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. So the con of online dating. So some people have some feelings about online dating that it's unknown, that something scary is going to happen. Um, and I would say, like, life is not known. Right. So the con is being stuck in the story that you're afraid of the unknown. Right. So, I mean, you know, you, everyone gets to make their own choice, but get into the game of life. Detach yourself from, 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 from perfection, really, because it doesn't exist. All right. Someone had an off, off topic question. Go ahead and put that question and maybe it'll be a topic for next week's um, Tiffany Talks. What was the off topic uh, question? I'm just curious. Queen, Gym people. ask it yet. I think it's Queen V. Okay. So um, we had so much funny stuff to cover, you guys. I think we're going to start a little podcast or something, right? Where we can just talk and go. Um, if you guys if you guys into that, just type in the chat if you'd be interested in hearing a podcast of us talking about relationships and leadership. A and vlogcast. A vlogcast. A, a, vlog, a vlogcast? A vlogcast. A vlogcast. Yeah, it's fun. All right. Love it. Just love talking, it. talking versus being, the whole, all the energy of all of it. Okay, Queen, where's your off tight question? Gym people never date each other, says JoJo. Too I just want to say one more thing about the cons of dating. There are no cons of being in partnership with someone. There are no cons of being in partnership, okay? There are cons of being isolated. There are cons of being in isolation. Life is a team sport. Life is a team sport. It is not a solo sport. That's why there's no con to being in partnership. So the, the idea is to be in partnership. And the only way to be in partnership is to move towards partnership courageously. Oh, so wait a minute. I just want to say you don't know who the person is with in online dating, right? So we don't know who anybody is, right? If you go down the street and you meet somebody at the grocery store, you don't know that person either, right? At least if online dating, you get to know somebody from the comfort of your own home. You can talk it through. You can meet somewhere. So there are things like that. Do I have any cosmetics? Well, no, I'm hearing what I'm hearing is that, yes, introductions are great. If you if you're dating by introduction, brava. That does not mean though that the person that is being introduced to you is going to work out. It just right. means that they've been that somebody's validated them. They've somebody said given them a, a thumb up, a, a, a stamp of approval. So that stamp of approval doesn't exist in the online world. It's true, and I do I do love the idea of an introduction. However, either we get back to introductions, people out there in the world, or there's there's the idea of meeting someone you don't know. Uh -huh. And I, I, I do love the introduction thing. There's a whole thing about the introduction that we could go into as a conversation because I, I believe getting back to the world of introductions is amazing. And Tiffany used to, it used to introduce people to their spouses back in the day. She did. Uh -huh. Hey, you've introduced people to their spouses. Okay. So listen, so Queen has a, uh, a subject. Uh, you do I have any cosmetic surgery? That's another show which we can talk about, right? We can talk about this. is not about online dating, right? But guess what? I'm, I'm gearing up. For, I'm gearing up for cosmetic surgery. I'll be ready in about five years. <laughs> okay, listen, you guys. We get to we get to move forward from today. If you have any other questions, type them in the chat. We will be reading them. We will be answering them. And if you want to have any uh, topics that you'd like to cover uh, next week for Tiffany Tops. Talks type that in too. Shout out to everybody. Thank you, Jackie. Thank yes. you, Jojo. Yes. Thank you, Q. Shout out to everybody that was listening. We appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, we're talking about gym couples. I had lots of gym relationships. What are you talking about? Hey, and vanity is a good thing. That means that you care enough to take care of yourself. That's all. Vanity is a good thing, you guys. If you care enough to take care of your body, right? To work out and eat healthy. If you want to call that vain, go right ahead. Vanity is a great thing in that aspect. All right, you guys, I love you. A Barbie doll and Ken never meet in gyms, right? Well, Barbie doll and Ken don't exist. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Love you. Have they exist in the meta world. They exist in meta. Meta, right? <laughs> right. Oh my God. Bye. Thank you, C. Where can they follow Bye. you? They want to see more of you. Oh, follow me on um, social media. Cedra Stokes. Everywhere. Cedra Stokes. Facebook, Instagram, Instagram and Facebook, Instagram and Facebook at Cedra Stokes. Cedra I'm Stokes. starting my YouTube page. It'll be started. I have no followers right now. Not even one. I don't even think I follow myself.